the book of Luke, chapter number 9, and we'll look at two verses of Scripture there, a couple, uh, and then bring some other uh, thoughts from the Scripture tonight. And I want to uh, look at this this evening. Luke, chapter number 9, and verse, uh, oh, about 28, verse nine, chapter 9, verse 28. He's getting ready to have a prayer meeting here. Luke 9, 28. And it came to pass, look at that, and it came to pass about eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. <whistles> and go deer hunting, they went to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glycerin. The Lord transformed right there in front of them as he prayed. Now, I want to preach tonight on why go to prayer meeting. Why go to prayer meeting? To follow the Lord's example and great men of the church in the past, we must pray. We must pray in private. We must pray together uh, in, in public. And we must pray in secret. Uh, more things are wrought in the work of God, lasting things, permanent, permanent things by prayer than any other thing. Somebody said the footprints on the sands of time are made after knee prints. Amen. And every great man that God's ever used in a real way, now I don't know about some of this, this fabricated spirituality we got nowadays. I, that stuff's all crazy. But every man that God has used to permanently influence a generation was a man who knew how to pray and did pray. Now, I, I've got this on my heart, not just because we're having a prayer meeting Friday night, but it's very good that we are. I think it's because bus workers, uh, the best way to have a really great bus route is pray and then work. Sunday school teachers, if I were you, I would pray till God fell the, the power of God on that Sunday school class. I've seen it happen. I've seen Sunday school classes break out into like a revival service where people were crying and weeping and going to the altar in the Sunday school class. Same way as preaching. I've been begging the Lord to pour out His Spirit on our church and give us a new fresh zeal and enthusiasm and burden and faith and, and just a new determination to serve. When, in this day and time when so many are letting up, backing up, backing out, quitting, giving up, and just going soft, it's, boy, it'd be a good time just to buckle down. I mean, put the hammer down, brother, and, and, and floor it and just see what God might do. So tonight, I want to talk about why I go to prayer meeting. One time Jesus talked about uh, praying in secret and going in the closet to pray, and you should do that. I definitely believe in that, and I do that. I literally go in the closet. We have an upstairs closet in our bedroom, and it's literally big enough you know, to walk in, and I got a mat laying in there, and I was up there last night on my face laying in my prayer closet by myself. Uh, I, sometimes I'll get up there and I, I mean I didn't I, I went to sleep didn't know where I was at woke up praying went back to sleep woke up praying and I mean I fought and I fought last night it was like just just going through a briar patch. If you've ever tried to pray, you know what I'm talking about. It's just like, yeah, you can't keep your thoughts together. You can't keep, uh, you know, you, you try to pray and your mind goes way out yonder somewhere and then you think of you ought to be doing this and oh yeah, I forgot I was supposed to call so and so and, and you try to say, now Lord, yeah, and, then you, and then you get confused and the devil will fight you. Uh, but I'm telling you, the Lord said to pray. Now the Lord didn't say that we're just to pray in private only. But we are to get together at a certain place at a certain time and pray. And I'm going to talk about that tonight. Why go to prayer meeting? We are having one here Wednesday night. We are having one here Friday night. This is a men's prayer meeting. 
I guess that makes us terrible, I reckon. Uh, but uh, uh, it's just a thing that people have done for the, through the years. Don't get offended, ladies. You can pray all you want to. We know I ain't going to stop you. Uh, but it's a men's prayer meeting. Men need to get together and pray and pray and pray for our lives and families and our churches and our country and our world. So tonight, I want to give you three reasons why you ought to go to prayer meeting. Number one, you know why you ought to go? Because the devil will hate it. The devil hates it. As the old saying goes, oh, Satan trembles when he sees the weakest saint upon his knees. I don't think that it bothers the devil too bad for me to get my guitar and sing a few songs. He probably don't like it. Uh, but I don't think it bothers the devil too bad uh, for me to watch a video, uh, uh, maybe up preaching on the internet. He don't like it, but you know what makes the devil nervous? When we get on his knees, like this right here, and we get down and we say, oh Lord, oh Lord, would you do something in our lives? Oh Lord, would you do something in my family? That's what makes the devil, he don't like that. He don't don't like that. That's why he fights it so much. He delights in some things. Uh, he don't really care uh, about us getting head over heels involved in hobbies and, and sports. And uh, people have little hobbies that they do, and there's not nothing sinful about them. Uh, people have sports they enjoy, and there's nothing sinful about them. Although I, I, I don't know about professional sports, if they take the fans and the money and the cheerleading and everything out, it'd be all right. Just the game's okay. But boy, they've made it into a, an idol and a god. So you know, some of that you can carry too far. And I'm. I'm I'm not saying it's all of the devil, uh, but there, there's some things you can do like that. You can go hunting. You can go fishing. Uh, you can play golf on your day off. Or you, uh, if you like to, some people enjoy just working on the yard. Some people like go in the mountains or go out on the lake. There's nothing wrong with that. The devil don't care a whole, he don't get too upset about that. But I'll tell you what he don't like. He don't like it. Well, I like Billy Sunday. He told his converts. Billy Sunday got a convert, and he sat him down one time, and he said, uh, you want to make it? And the guy said, yeah, I want to be a good Christian. What I got to do? He said, you got to do three things. He said, you read that Bible 15 minutes a day. He said, you pray 15 minutes a day, and you talk to somebody else about the Lord 15 minutes a day, and you'll be all right. You say, well, Brother Danny, that sounds awful simple. Well, if you think about it, most people don't pray 15 minutes a day, and most people sure don't witness 15 minutes a day. That was some good advice from the great preacher Billy Sunday. I tell you what I read, it's hard to believe. I read that the world champion, this has been years ago, push up, the, the world champion push-upper, whatever, the, the push-up champion, whatever that would be you'd call that, uh, would, would the world champion done it four hours a day. You heard me, four hours a day. Now, I'm telling you, brother, I mean, I, I do push-ups. They're easy when you do them like this, you know, because uh, you ain't all the way down on the ground. I, I've tried all kinds of push-ups. The hardest push-ups is when you, you up against the wall, put your feet up about right here. I like that and try them, buddy, if you don't find that. If you're strong, uh, put your feet on the wall about right there and do some push-ups. And I can do a few. I, for a while there, I was doing uh, uh, 50 push-ups uh, every day, but I got me some uh, I got me some of these little weights. They're 12 pounds, and I, I keep them in my bedroom, and while I'm making radio program and everything, I'll take them in, and I'll do like this. That's 24 pounds, and I do that 100 times uh, about, every, about every day this past week, and I do some other things. I got this other little old thing uh, like this, you know, um, and uh, uh, I, I, that's 100 pounds total. I have uh, 24 hundred, right, total. Uh, and I got this other little thing where I do like this and go, four hours, you have lost your mind. Hey, no way. I don't care. I ain't going to be the world champion push-up uh, person anyway, but the guy does push-ups four hours a day. How many push-ups could you do in four hours? I don't know. I mean, if you were just doing them regularly, it'd be like one, two, three, four, like it. Four solid 
hours. I'm sure he'd take a break in there, could not. I mean, I can think of something a lot better to do with four hours than do push-ups, amen? I mean, if you want to, I, I got some uh, cross ties where I put, me put around my house, if you want to do that, it's just as good for you and you can accomplish something. Uh, but uh, I, I thought, Lord, if a man do push-ups four hours, it wouldn't hurt, I don't think it'd kill us to pray uh, half an hour, 30 minutes a day. Tell you what I seen one time. It's gonna be hard for you to believe, but it's true. I, I was in South Carolina preaching down around Florence, South Carolina. And this guy took me out and he's gonna take me out to eat. And we was going up the road. And you know how they have those big five lane highways that have restaurants and car lots and restaurants and car and Ford dealership, uh, Chevrolet dealership, Oldsmobiles, uh, all the way up through there. And I looked and on top of this, sort of a, like a small hill, there, there was a big car lot there, and there was one of them tents, that uh, a small tent, sort of like you have at a funeral or something, it's a little bit bigger than that, and it had a big promotion sign there, and there was a bunch of people just standing around this car. And I said, what are they doing? He said, that is the most amazing thing, Brother Danny. He said, they, they are running a promotion, this car dealership, and they do it ever so often. They said that they're going to take a brand new car. I forgot what it was. And they're going to put it out there in the middle of that tent. They say, we are going to give this car away this week. And they said, anybody that wants to can enter in the contest. You know what you got to do to win it? Touch it. You put your finger on it like that right there. And there's about, a, there's probably 75 people around that thing with their fingers on it like that. And the last man standing with his finger on that car gets it free. So there, I mean, there's people standing there, there's kid, uh, uh, ladies and teen, young people, and everybody had their finger on that car. You put a lot of fingers on a car uh, all the way around it uh, like that. I said, you're kidding. It's free? They're going to give it away? He said, yeah. Maybe, look, $30,000, I don't know, it probably wasn't that much. Let's just say, let's say $30,000. And I thought, good night, that's a deal. And I said, I said, how long did the person stand there that won that car? He said, the last time they did it, he said, there'd be some of them standing there, 8, 10, 12 hours. Finally, they just throw their hand up and said, I'm starving. I'm going home. And then some of them would say, they'd be falling asleep like this. He said, their feet start swelling up. Uh, some of them stand there all night and part of the next day. Some of them stand there all night, all day the next day, all night the next night. And a man that won it, 78 hours. 78 hours. At 24, 24, uh, uh, four, 48, that's four days. Uh, 68, uh, that's what? Almost, almost four, five, four? Three days and six hours. Now, brother, that guy got a new car. Now, if you think about it, let's see, 78 hours, 78 hours would be, uh, if it was 30, if it's 36, $7,000 car, that would be $500 an hour. Is there anybody here that would stand and do this for $500 an hour? I would. That's good money. That's good money. It's standing there $500 an hour, but 78 hours straight. That's the bad part. That's the kicker. That's the hard part. Now, if you could make it $500 an hour, and in three days, you'd have a brand new car paid for. Now, if a man's standing there like that and say in three days, if I can just make it three days, I don't know if I, I, don't know if I even believe that or not. Uh, is that possible that uh, a person could stand there? I mean, he probably just leaned up against it and took a nap or something. I don't know what he done. Three days and a half, brother, with his finger on a car. Hats off to him, brother. I admire anybody can do that. I mean, Lord have mercy. But when you think about it, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good deal. Five hundred dollars at least an hour. And I'm preaching and thinking while I'm preaching, so my math may not be exactly right. Uh, but it's uh, uh, somewhere around in there. And I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, that's a bunch. Now, my my theses and my argument is this: If a man, if a man can stand and will stand 
78 hours for a car. And, he, and if I could do it, I would. That's a good deal. If I could get a new car in 78 hours, I'd do it. Start tomorrow morning. Go to Thursday or something like that. I'd do it, wouldn't you? But I'm telling you, if we'd say 70 hours for a brand new car, 78 hours, could we not watch one hour for our kids and our boys and our girls and our family and our nation that God might hear our prayers? Couldn't we do that? I mean, great day in the morning, people. If a man do it for a car, surely we'd do it so our kids won't go to hell. If one person gets saved on October the 14th, hot dogs don't bring conviction. Hay rides don't bring conviction. I mean, the Holy Ghost don't come in on the back of a four-wheeler. He is prayed down in honor when God's people pray. Why well, go to prayer meeting? The devil hates it. Number two, you know why you go to prayer meeting? Because God will love it. God will love it. It shows a definite response and obedience to God's word. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. It shows a delight in his will. He said in 1 Timothy 2, uh, first of all, First of all, I will that first of all, prayers, supplication should be made for all men, for those that are in authority, all of our rulers, our, our congressmen and senators, God knows they need it right now, the, the president right on down to the, to the sheriff of Burke County, uh, leaders, teachers, uh, uh, government officials, uh, for leaders and those that are in authority. And right on down to your neighbor, right, right on down to the person that lives down the road from you. I do this about about every year. I get a I get a burden. Not, not every single year, but I have several times. When it comes this time of year and we really put on a big push to win souls, I, I get some tracks or I get camp meeting flyers and uh, go down the road where I live. And I knock on every door down the road, down to Hoppy Tom. You know, there's a lot more houses down your road than you think there are. You start going to all of them, there's a whole, you think, oh, there ain't about eight or ten up here. Lord, there's about 20 now up in Hoppy Tom. And uh, I get in there. If they're not home, stick it in the door. If they are home, put it on here and invite them uh, to the camp meeting or to whatever we're having. I was coming up the road here tonight, coming in here, and my heart was touched again. How many times do we drive out this road, Tom Dill Avenue, and don't even give these people a thought? that lives in these houses out through here. There's 10 or 15 houses up in there. How, how, how can we just drive right by them like we don't even know or care? I mean, wouldn't it be good if somebody got a burden? I'm going to hit every house between here and the highway. I'm at that trailer park out here on 106. I'm going to go to every one of them. You know what? We're, we don't, either don't care. We're fear of ridicule or afraid somebody's going to cuss us out or run us off or something like that. I'm telling you tonight, brother, uh, it, it shows we have a delight in God's will. It shows we have a desire to see his work prosper. We're not satisfied with things like they are. We're not happy. I mean, I mean, we're blessed and God's been good to us, but none of us should be happy. If there's empty seats, we shouldn't be happy. If there's those in our church that are backslid, we shouldn't be shouting too much. We ought to be thanking God and praying God, get a hold of our church people. God, get a hold of our young people. God, get a hold of our teenagers. Instead of having the fuss at people on Sunday morning to come back Sunday. I shouldn't have to fuss at people to come back to church. God help people. People try with God. I don't want to go uh, to church and the house of God. Ladies and gentlemen, God will love it. God shows it by so many things that happen while people are on the way to prayer meeting. I'll give you a couple of them. In Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 11, Peter and John went up to the temple at the hour of prayer. You don't believe God loves prayer meeting? Here, got Peter, you going to prayer meeting tonight, John? Ah, I don't know. I thought there's a movie on I'm going to go watch. What about you? I think I'll go. Why don't you go with me? So here goes Peter and John up to prayer meeting. And they look, and there like this guy at the temple's gate. And he's, and he's crippled. And he looked up and he said, uh, 
Uh, you guys wouldn't take up a love offering for me, would you? I expect that's all they expect. That's about all the world expects from the church. They don't expect no miracles. They don't expect no real power. They don't expect nothing life changing. Maybe a little handout. But you have it. And he said, "Will you give me some money?" And old Peter looked at him. And he said, "Son, I, I ain't got no money." He said, "Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth." Rise up and walk. And buddy, that old boy jumped up and his ankles got strong. It wasn't one of these fake things where he, it, it, as soon as the lights went out and the janitor cleaned, carpeted, everything I got clean, his pain come back and he couldn't walk. Son, that boy stayed well. And he went jumping up and down. Woo! Hallelujah! Woo! Like that right there. Anybody who thinks, oh, that's just emotional stuff, you shouldn't do like it. Tell it to that guy who had been laying at the, at the gate of the temple and couldn't walk, you'd be shouting too. You know what the Lord did? The Lord did that because some old boys went to prayer meeting. Amen. If they had went to the movies that night, that would have never happened. In Acts chapter 12 and verse 12, there's another one, a Peter there, who, who the, God worked a miracle through him. In Acts chapter 13, verse 2, they all got together and prayed and the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Paul, and Barnabas for the work that I've called them to do. Ain't that something? The Holy Spirit talked, brother. Uh, they got together and the Holy Ghost, uh, they prayed and God called missionaries when they were gathered together. And then there in Acts chapter 16, uh, they all got together and prayed and, and, the, and, the, uh, and the Lord moved again uh, and chose the, the, the I'm sorry, I, got the, I might have that story backwards. But anyway, they chose the missionaries that went out and, that, and then they prayed. Number one, the devil hate it. Number two, God will love it. Number three, You'll enjoy it. You will enjoy it. You'll prosper in your soul. Amen? I've been in motels and I've been in revivals lots of times and I'd go and preach and only people can understand this are preachers. But sometimes when you preach, honestly, it feels like you're butting your head against a concrete wall. It feels like I'm in here and there's a glass wall between me and you about that thick and I can see you and you can see me but you, you can't hear what I'm saying. That's the way it feels sometimes preaching. Honestly. I don't know if it's just spiritual hindrance or power, high places, wickedness. I'm not sure but I know, I know what I'm talking about. And I've had services like that and I've went home to my, back to my motel room almost sick to my stomach. Didn't want to eat. Didn't want us, couldn't sleep. And I'd lay there and toss and turn. And I'd say, God, where are you? God, please. God, I can't do this. God, please, I, I'm a flop. God, I might as well just stay at home. God, and I'd pray all day the next day. And I'm telling you, come back in there the next night. And it felt like uh, the, 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 the whole church was a piece of butter. And the word of God's like a knife. Just cutting it in pieces and people getting saved. Everybody, I'm telling you, that's the difference when we get down to pray and, and get a hold of God. You are not wasting your time. It's not just a ritual and saying, well, I prayed 10 minutes. Well, five more minutes. Well, five more minutes. It is, it is very beneficial to the person who's doing it. You will enjoy it. I'll never forget stories that I've told and others have told about how God answered prayer. Remember, Hyle telling that story about, he said he went to this church and it's just like what I described a while ago. Dead, pitiful, dead at four o'clock, wall left thick between the preacher and the car. He said it was awful. He said he went to his motel room and prayed and prayed all night and fasted. And I think fasted the next day. Prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And he said the next night he went to the church and he walked in. You know what? Y'all know what I'm talking about. You're not even the preacher, but you know sometimes when you go to church, I mean, it's just clear, buddy. I mean, the power of God's everywhere. You ever been in them like that? Boy, I'll, it's just like a wave. It comes in waves and the Holy Ghost comes in. He said he came back that night. He said the church was full. People brought people. And he thought, oh, my goodness. And he said he preached on the story of the prodigal son. 
And I've had stuff like this happen to me before, but this is a very vivid example. He said he preached on the prodigal son. Wasn't he going to preach on that? He said he preached on the prodigal son, and he said uh, he said he he, uh, uh, he he introduced the characters. There's the father. There's the rebellious son that went off into a far country. There's the other son that stayed at home, uh, you know, the good boy and, and all that. You know how that story goes? Every preacher preached on it. He said he went through that and he always had names for these characters. Like when I used to preach on that, I'd say it was uh, the Ponderosa they lived on and there was Ben Cartwright and Little Joe and Hoss and all of them. Nobody even knows who them, them are anymore. That was 25 years ago. Uh, but anyway, uh, he said he had names. He, had, uh, he, he named that first boy, uh, I don't know, I'd just say James or something like that. And uh, when he got to his name, he couldn't remember what he called him. And he said uh, the first boy's name was John, right out of the clear blue. And he said, good night, Lord, I'm done messing up again. The church is get, it ain't getting, people ain't getting nothing. I couldn't even remember the guy's name. John! And his little, his little brother went and got all his living and took it into a far country and wasted his substance with a riotous living. And he said, and his name was, couldn't remember his name. And he just said, little bud. Little bud went off and wasted his substance with riotous living. And he just stumbled through that. And he said, God, I stayed up all night. Stayed in all day. I prayed, God, why is it so hard to preach tonight? He said he got through preaching. He said the most amazing thing happened. About that time some fella come over here at the altar, bam, hit the floor. Started bawling his eyes out. Bam, here come a woman. Here come another guy. Here come another guy. Four or five people. People down there weeping, getting saved all over. He was amazed. He said, my goodness. What in the world? People's getting saved, hugging necks, standing up. And after he's over, he started shaking their hand. They said, preacher, that's the most amazing sermon I've ever heard in my life. God's brought our kids here tonight. God saved them. God saved them. And they, they said, what a blessing. What a blessing. They said, his little brother that's here tonight, we hadn't seen him in so long. We hadn't seen him in ages. He just broke, come in here tonight. He felt a strange pull on him, pulling him in there to that service that night. And he said something, the story went something like this. He said, uh, uh, preacher, uh, how did you know? He said, how did I know what? How did you know his name was John? He said, I did. He said, preacher, how did you know they call that other little bud? He said, excuse me for a minute. <laughs> Woo! I tell you, he said, I went back to the motel and made a trampoline out of my bed that night. Amen. He said, because God, in answer to prayer, knows what he's doing, people. Hey, hey, our generation has forgot that we're in touch with a holy God that knows the hearts and minds of men. He knows what everybody that walks in that door needs and he's able to meet that need. With the preaching of the word of God, you will enjoy it. You'll find in his presence, you'll find like Isaiah said, hear my Lord, send me. You know why you ought to go to prayer meeting? The devil hates it. God loves it. You would enjoy it and be blessed. I want to stop tonight. I want us all to stand. Miss Desi to come. Let's bow our heads, please. Our heads are bowed. Eyes are closed tonight. No one's looking. Heads are bowed and the eyes are closed. Maybe, maybe you have to work. Can't come Wednesday night. Can't come Friday night. We, we can pray now. Come on. We can pray right now. Pray for our family. Pray for our loved ones. Pray for our friends. Pray for our brothers and sisters. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll just spend a few minutes in prayer here tonight before we go. Amen. 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 
Amen. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. Listen, we can, we can rest one day when we get to heaven. Could you not watch one hour? Man, do push-ups four hours. We ought to be able to pray 30 minutes. That's right. Good night for the souls of our family and friends. Oh, Lord, do what ought to be done tonight. Oh, Lord, we're calling on you. Lord, we're calling on you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we know that you are still on the throne. Thou art still able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. And our Father, do what ought to be done tonight. Touch every heart and every life. Thank you for these men. Thank you for these ladies. Thank you for these young people that's here tonight. I pray that you bless them. I pray, Holy Ghost, come down. Touch every single heart here tonight. Do what ought to be done. Lord, I pray as we get ready for these big days in the next few weeks that you would put our church and give us a burden to pray, a burden to worship, a burden to have an old-fashioned camp meeting, a burden to, to, to witness, a burden to win soul. We don't want a camp meeting just so we can come in here and, and hear good singing and, and clap our hands and fellowship. Lord, we want to see it make a change in people's lives. Lord, eternal change, impermanent change. Souls being saved. God, break down the, the wall that the, the devil would try to put up. Bless our bus workers. Lord, fill every one of them with the Holy Spirit. God, God, give them that that they need to serve you and love you and do right. Oh, God, help us, Lord, tonight we pray. Have your way in our lives. Oh, Lord, bless us tonight we pray. And we love you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I'm still praying tonight. Don't get in no hurry. I hope that you'll pray this week. Hope you'll pray this week. Amen. Hallelujah. Not waste your time praying. Last night, I, it was so hard for me to pray. I'd say the same thing over and over and over. I'd start all over again. Oh, Lord, please help us. And, and I think you just said that a minute ago. You, know, you, you, you just feel crazy. You feel crazy. And it's demonic powers trying to stop you. My buddy, this morning when I was up here preaching, it kicked in. You know why? God done a work in some people's heart this morning that I didn't even know about until church was over. It's spiritual warfare that we're in. Sometimes we look at it like our ability to speak or our, our knowledge of the Bible. I mean, they, that ain't it. That, that's, that's good. But that don't change people. That don't get people saved from hell. It takes the Lord to do that. All right. You can be seated just a minute.